And there were some great writers working on the show, like A.J. Jean and Mike Rays, who went on to write some great episodes of The Simpsons and create underrated show The Critic. There are also some attempts at tackling serious issues. The producers of the show love to talk about Alf having survivor's guilt because of the planet blew up and he and he lived and about the episode where Alf dates a visually impaired woman. They don't seem to like to talk about the episode where the 200-something-year-old Alf hits on Tanner's teenage daughter, though, or when the puppeteer as Alf made crude comments towards the actress playing the teenage daughter in real life. They have written him saying the N-word, saying it as a reference to an L.A. episode with additional predictable comments about how everybody's too damn PC these days. Apparently, there was also an episode where a nuclear disarmament... My next piece for subscribers... is going to be about my middle school crush and Ben Folds, something that probably at least a few of you can relate to. And maybe I actually should write a story about two queens sneaking off together to have an affair. The Favourite and the Bridgerton were hits people on loving anarchistic gay stories about royalty. Maybe I was just ahead of my time. The stuff I did this week, I had a great time talking about movies and crushes and which TV show had the most characters I'm attracted to on the tasteless podcast, Listen Here. Also, I'm still doing videos on Cameo and they're a lot of fun if you know a fan of Matilda. Night Vale, Big Hero, etc. who would like a video for me, I'd be happy to give him a shout and tell him a story, sing them a song, or show them Oops, did I just swear on television? Haha. <laughs> Please forgive me. It doesn't quite work though, and the pilot's pilot is ridiculous even for the 80s sitcom. An alien crashes into the Tanner's family garage, and they immediately bring the alien into their house. The pathogens that the thing carries. Willie the dad is thrilled to meet an alien, but it turns out the alien speaks English, walks upright, and drinks beer. How did this show not give Carl Sagan an aneurysm? Things escalate very quickly with the mom waking up to find Alf sleeping in bed with her. That same morning, allegedly uptight Willie gets out of the shower, wet and completely nude, to find Alf sitting on the bathroom with them, and just asks Alf for a towel. Some of the government officials show up. But the children somehow already sin with this disgusting asshole that parents feel protective and don't turn him in. The Tanners. Yes, the Tanners never seem to address Alf's hideousness, and they love being around him despite his actively making everybody's lives worse. There's also the cat thing. He eats cats, he constantly chasing around the family's cat, lucky trying to eat it, and they act like it's just a mild annoyance. Like him leaving the toilet seat up. And let's be real, the whole eating cats thing was probably just a retooled cunnilingus joke, especially considering how phallic Alf's nose is. Austin Powers was subtler. It's also weird that he responds to Alf when that's not actually his name, Alf. Just means alien life form. His real name is Gordon Shumway, which could actually be a Good one-off joke, strange alien creature has a very human, vaguely Canadian name. The Tanners, yes, the Tanners never seem to address Alf's hideousness, and they love being around him despite his actively making everybody's lives worse. There's also the cat thing. He eats cats, he constantly chasing around the family's cat, lucky trying to eat it, and they act like it's just a mild annoyance. Like him leaving the toilet seat up. And let's be real, the whole eating cats thing was probably just a retooled cunnilingus joke, especially considering how phallic Alf's nose is. Austin Powers was subtler. It's also weird that he responds to Alf when that's not actually his name, Alf. Just means alien life form. His real name is Gordon Shumway, which could actually be a Good one-off joke, strange alien creature has a very human, vaguely Canadian name. Or it would be if they hadn't already run that into the ground by making everybody about Gordon Alf incredibly human, 
Well, except for the existing cats thing, but humans have done that and still do sometimes in some parts of the world. The he's your rude, funny uncle, but he's an alien thing doesn't work when he's neither particularly funny nor much of an alien. Alf's jokes are like a wasp impression of a borscht belt comedy, and there are parts of the U.S. Canada that are more distinct from each other than Earth and Alf's planet, Melmac. By the puppeteer and creator Paul Fusco's own admission in this amazing mental floss oral history of the show, I was very against anything sci-fi in the show. I didn't want people to buy into anything other than Alf being real. Then what was the point of making him an alien? That was a wasted opportunity right there. Maybe actors sense this. Because there's a split second at the end of the pilot where Max Wright, who plays Willie, looks right at the camera, a little bemused, as if he's asking the audience, Why are you watching this? This show is infamous for having a truly unhappy cast, and none of them returned for the 1996 TV movie Project Elf. Every recurring actor has said they were glad it ended, and some even said that they would have gone crazy if it had gone another season. This is mostly because of how dangerous the set was. A stunt performer played Elf inside a suit in the first few episodes, but I guess they phased him out due to good old 80s downsizing. An instant, they built a bunch of trap doors into a set so the puppeteer could play Elf wherever he needed to be. That meant cast members could often did fall into the holes, additionally setting up shots so Elf could be moved around. This is mostly because how dangerous the set was. A stunt performer played Elf inside a suit the first few episodes, but I guess they phased him out due to an old 80s downsizing. There were a, a dueling egos and a lot of arguments. Max Wright, who considered himself a serious theater actor, is said to have once yelled, put us all on sticks here, we're the puppets, we're the puppets. So not great experience all around. Aside from Alf's general creepiness and backstage drama, there's nothing really scary in the show. There's a bit of push and a pull between being slightly risque and being a wholesome family show, but for the most part, the plots tend toward the anodyne. There are some slightly funny moments in later episodes, like one where Alf joins a multi-level marketing company. This is mostly because how dangerous the set was. A set performer played Elf inside a suit the first few episodes, but I guess they phased him out due to an old 80s downsizing. There were a, a dueling egos and a lot of arguments. Max Wright, who considered himself a serious theater actor, is said to have once yelled, put us all on sticks here, we're the puppets, we're the puppets. So not great experience all around. Aside from Elf's general creepiness and backstage drama, there's nothing really scary in the show. There's a bit of push and a pull between being slightly risque and being a wholesome family show, but for the most part, the plots tend toward the anodyne. There are some slightly funny moments in later episodes, like one where Elf joins a multi-level marketing company. And there were some great writers working on the show, like A.J. Jean and Mike Reyes, who went on to write some great episodes of The Simpsons and create underrated show The Critic. There are also some attempts at tackling serious issues. The producers of the show love to talk about Alf having survivor's guilt because of the planet blew up and he, and he lived and about the episode where Alf dates a visually impaired woman. They don't seem to like to talk about the episode where the 200-something-year-old Alf hits on Tanner's teenage daughter, though, or when the puppeteer as Alf made crude comments towards the actress playing the teenage daughter in real life. They have written him saying the N-word, saying it as a reference to an L.A. episode, with additional predictable comments about how everybody's too damn PC these days. Apparently, there was also an episode where a nuclear disarmament 